Of all the people who used my stiff the bank kits to stall their foreclosures until they could afford to move or some other happy thing happened, a few made it to the Supreme Court of Canada, but this is the first one that did. The case of the uh, total allergy syndrome victim, Mrs. Jean Metcalf, who had nowhere to go and was being evicted into an unclean world where she could die. And this is the story of... Okay, the case of Mrs. Jean Metcalf, my first uh, Jesus defense to foreclosure all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. So, <clears throat> totally allergic woman faces eviction into unclean world. Ottawa Citizen, November 10th, 1982, how I heard about it. By Jackie Miller. A Smith Falls woman who says she's allergic to the world outside her home is being evicted and says she plans to take her belongings and live on the street. The Bank of Montreal has given Jean Metcalf, 51, until Friday to leave her house because she hasn't made a mortgage payment in eight months. Metcalf claims to be severely allergic to most things in modern life. Chemicals, synthetic materials, exhaust fumes, cigarette smoke, perfume, even fumes from cooking. <clears throat> and after this was all over, she was the first person to get some sort of acknowledgement for total allergy syndrome in Canada. So, the rambling six-bedroom house where she lives alone is stripped nearly bare with all the synthetic carpet, drapes, and furniture removed. She th says she's been unable to find another house she's not allergic to and is convinced she'll become seriously ill if she's forced to leave. I'll just have to live on the street, she said Monday after getting word from the bank to expect a bailiff at her door on Friday. So, Metcalf, who's grown, who has two grown children in Smith Falls and two in Alberta, says she can't live with family or friends because she'd be exposed to things like synthetic carpet, cigarette smoke and fumes, and oil and gas heaters. All my friends have gas and oil heating. I've been to their homes, but I had to leave before I got ill. I have a tent, but I can't even live there because I'm allergic to the canvas. I'm just trusting to God to find me a home. She says she needs a home with electric heat and no carpeting. Traditional allergists dismiss the idea of total allergy syndrome as medically unproven as of then. But some unorthodox doctors say the massive chemical buildup in modern life can trigger a breakdown in the body's immune system for some people like Mrs. Metcalf. She was 245 and I met her when she weighed 95. Quite a loss. Metcalf belongs to the Human Ecology Foundation, a self-help group for people who believe many illnesses are caused by things in the environment. Ottawa Dr. Louise Gilka, a family physician specializing in preventative medicine, said it would be a tragedy if Metcalf is forced from her home. It was Gilka who advised Metcalf to avoid going out into a polluted environment and to eat a strictly limited diet. Last year, Metcalf quit her job boarding women from the Rideau Regional Institute. She used to take care of women in her home. Her 436 monthly welfare check is too small to pay the mortgage and heat payments that top 600 a month. Ron Howard, uh, Paul Howard, uh, the lawyer representing the Bank of Montreal, says the bank has no choice but to represent, repossess Mrs. Metcalf's house. We've been trying to stall, but she's been unable to come up with all, any alternative financing. This lady is many months in arrears, and there's only so far that poor bank can go. Who is the innocent party here? The bank lent some money and the lady isn't paying it back. Metcalf says she's been looking for another house to rent for a year and a half and has put ads in several newspapers and no luck. Ah, oh, November the 10th, 1982. November the 16th, 1982. Woman vows to fight bank in courts by Barry Raisin. An Elmsley Street woman who hasn't made a mortgage payment since April is gearing up for a showdown with the Bank of Montreal. Jean Metcalf refuses to leave her home and has enlisted the support of bank fighter John Turmel of Ottawa. Mr. Turmel, who wears a white hard hat and calls himself the engineer, is an off political candidate for the Christian Credit Party and campaigns for the abolition of interest rates. His brother Ray ran in Leeds Grenville federal by-election last month. Mrs. Tur uh, Metcalf and Mr. Turmel are trying to charge the bank man Manager with keeping the common gaming house and genocide. Mort Gage. The first charge is to be laid because a mortgage is a gamble, and the second because interest charges deliberately inflicts on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction, Mr. Turmel says in a sworn affidavit, which is part of the civil proceedings in Perth this Thursday. 
The that's the wording for genocide, inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction. Usury. The civil action in the Supreme Court of Ontario is a motion by Mrs. Metcalf to stop the bank's foreclosure process on the grounds that it is frivolous and that it's physically impossible to exact more monetary units than were created by the loan. That is the cornerstone of Termel doctrine. You can't pay back more than they print. The people should only have to pay back as much money as they borrowed and they printed. Paul Howard, the bank's lawyer, said the bank is bent over backwards trying to work something out. They went power of sale, a process whereby the mortgagee can take back the property if the mortgage isn't paid in August, but have been holding back to allow Mrs. Metcalf time to find a solution. At one point, they thought she might be able to come up with some money. Another time, MP Paul Dick requested the bank wait until the Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation could look at the case. She was supposed to be out by Friday, but then she and Mr. Termel filed the court application, and the bank is at a standstill again. Ah, oh, poor bank. It makes it feel so bad. The bank does not does have the power to have Mrs. Metcalf evicted, Mr. Howard noted. Yeah, but not without finding a judge first. Mrs. Metcalf says she feels confident the bank won't evict her as long as the case is before the courts. If the court throws this out on Friday, we're just going to go lay another charge and go to a higher court. The judges at the top will be the ones to evict us. They'll be the ones to kill us. Mrs. Metcalf's and a companion, Diane Elder, claim to have a rare sickness known as total allergy syndrome. She says she's allergic to the 20th century. She couldn't live in an ordinary house because synthetic fibers, such as those found in furniture, floor coverings, make her violently ill. During an interview with a reporter from the Record News, she opened the window because she said the smell of the soap and aftershave made her ill. Medical authorities are divided on the existence of the syndrome. Then, many claim it is a neurosis and not a physical ailment. Then... On Monday afternoon, Mr. Termell and Mrs. Metcalf and others picketed the Bank of Montreal. A clip of the protest was shown on CJOH TV. Mrs. Metcalf says it would cost her more than a thousand a month to renew her mortgage and that she has to stay in her house because it's specially equipped to cope with her illness. It's her bubble. She hasn't been able to work for some time, and because of the illness, she said, and is on welfare. She quit making payments last spring because she didn't think paying interest was fair, although she is more than willing to pay the principal, she said. The Jesus defense. Give the principal, stiff them for the interest. Somebody has got to be a crusader for rights, even if it's got to be a sick woman. The bank manager should be put behind bars pending the case. Mrs. Mr. Metcalf and Mr. Termel have agree are agreed. They plan to start legal action against the Justice of the Peace, Howard Stanzel, if he doesn't file the charges. John Termel gets the credit for keeping her in her house, she says. He's our knight in shining armor. I don't know much about him, but I like what I see. Every day that John keeps me in this house is one day less that I'll have to sleep in the park, she says. Mr. Howard says the public is the loser in this case. Other people have to pay higher rates because of actions like this. November 23rd, Bank wins round one in Metcalf dispute. The Bank of Montreal has won round one over Gene Metcalf and John Termel, but Mr. Termel says this is just the beginning of his bout against the bank. On Friday morning, County Court Judge Matheson, acting as the Supreme Court of Ontario judge, threw out Mrs. Metcalf's motion to stop the bank's foreclosure proceedings against her. The Elmsley Street resident hasn't made a payment on a mortgage since April. Mr. Termel had filed the motion on behalf of Mrs. Metcalf. It said, in essence, that the bank couldn't foreclose because they're charging interest on the mortgage. Charging interest is a violation of biblical, physical, and criminal law, Mr. Termel said in the application. As well as throwing the motion out, Judge Matheson charged court costs to Mrs. Metcalf. Bank lawyer Paul Howard said the process of evicting Mrs. Metcalf is continuing. Contacted in Ottawa Tuesday morning, Mr. Tremell was anxious awaiting, awaiting the Supreme Court of Canada decision on whether Bank of Canada Governor Gerald Bowie is guilty of genocide, one of my other Supreme Court cases. He feels the bank governor is guilty of the charge because charging interest rates deliberately inflicts on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction. The part in quotations is part of the criminal code definition of genocide. Mr. Termell and Mrs. Metcalf have also gone to Justice of the Peace Howard Stanzel to lay charges of genocide and keeping a common gaming house against the local Bank of Montreal manager. Charging interest on a mortgage is a form of gambling, leading to the gambling house charge, Mr. Termell says. If the Supreme Court should decide my way, everybody's off the hook. Say a prayer and you got a no-interest mortgage. He believes interest charges will fall by the wayside when computers take over banking industry. Customers will only have to pay a service charge to borrow money 
he says. He's preparing an appeal of Judge Matheson's decision as well. Mr. Stanzel hasn't gone ahead with the charges against the local bank manager, and as is upset Mr. Turmel, he plans to take legal action against a JP if he doesn't proceed. Mrs. Metcalf has said she and her companion El Diane Elder would die if they were evicted from the home. Both claim to have a rare sickness called total allergy syndrome, which makes them allergic to almost everything. The house is specially equipped to handle their illness, she says. Although she's unwilling to leave the home, she's also refused to pay the mortgage because the bank charges interest on it. Her mortgage came up for renewal recently and she says it would cost more than a thousand to renew it.